What's up guys, my name is Aaron and today we are handling the job of replacing our macerator pump. Watch at your own risk. Here we have the new pump. It's a Flowjet brand. This is my part number here. Uh, the best way to make sure you get the right pump is to check your original pump. There'll be a sticker on it with a part number and cross-reference that. This is the most common pump that I've seen. Fits many different models. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link to this one down below from Amazon. It is an affiliate link, so we will receive a small commission, but it will not cost you guys anymore and we do appreciate your support. Now I wouldn't classify this as a difficult job, but it is kind of a dirty one and not one that many of us want to do. I've actually done this a few times, so stick around to the end and I'll kind of go over some of the reasons on why we had to replace this and uh, what happened to our previous pumps. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna get this thing uh, installed. So all we need for today's job is an empty bucket, some silicone, a socket set, rubber gloves really help, and a flathead screwdriver. You don't need a whole lot of tools to handle this job, but it can be kind of a difficult one if you have to replace it on the road. Uh, the whole pump assembly is what we're replacing today. They also make a repair kit that if you had a little bit more time, you could take apart your old pump and replace uh, if it's leaking, uh, the gaskets or the plastic impeller sometimes breaks off inside also but our whole pump is bad so today we're just going to replace the whole thing uh, we have the van sitting on about three inches of leveling blocks in the back and that gives us just enough room to handle this so i don't like to jack up the van if i don't have to to work on it and i've actually done this job before without jacking it up at all this is the underside of a 2014 Airstream Interstate. Airstream has been using these macerator pumps for many years, and I've also seen them on road truck models, Class A's, and I'm sure they're out there on every other type of RV too. Before we get started, we're gonna need to disconnect all of the power. So we have our chassis battery, our coach batteries, and our solar panels. We'll go ahead and cut the wires on the old pump now. And then we'll go ahead and remove our four bolts. This part's a little bit tricky to film because those bolts are tucked up in there, but we're gonna use a 11 millimeter socket. Uh, might need an extension, I'm not sure. And uh, we'll just go ahead and pull those four bolts out. There's one here, one there, and then two on the back side there. Hopefully that shows up in the camera frame. All right, this isn't too bad so far. We got the four nuts off. I did end up using a little bit of an extension, like a two, three inch extension on this ratchet. Those four bolts come off nice and easy. Um, but now we're gonna get to the dirty part of the job because um, all that's left holding on that pump is the two hose clamps to the two hoses. So this is where these gloves come in handy and the bucket. Oh, and I forgot to mention a tip. I probably should have mentioned this earlier. Uh, a good thing to do is obviously completely empty your tanks and do a flush a bunch of times if you can so that it is as clean as possible down there. Hopefully you're watching the whole video first before you try to tackle your own job. Okay, for this step, I'm gonna use my gloves, the bucket, towel, and my flathead screwdriver. And we are gonna disconnect this hose clamp right here. If I remember correctly, the small one inch hose is a lot harder to get off. So I'm gonna disconnect this one first. And also this is where all of the liquid is gonna drain out, hopefully into your bucket and not make a big mess. There's a bunch of silicone that is inside of this large hose here, which helps seal the connection because it's kind of uh, ribbed and once that silicone kind of breaks, that's when the liquid starts to come out. You can also use a nut driver for this instead of a flathead. If you have that, it's a little bit easier. Okay, the hose clamp is loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that back. 
maybe give it a few more turns here there we go and I'll spare the gross details of this but we're going to disconnect this hose from the pump itself and kind of drain the fluid and liquid out of this hose there's going to be I don't know how much but a decent amount that comes out that you need to dispose of and there it goes so we'll let all that liquid drain out before we move on to the next step okay guys this truly is the messy part of the job and there's a lot more liquid liquid than you would expect in there maybe up to a gallon so like an ice cream pail would be perfect but just don't come at it with a, a tiny little cup because uh, you're going to overflow quickly so um, we're just letting the pump drain out and the hose kind of completely drain and then we have one last hose connection on that small one inch hose and once we remove that then the pump will be completely free okay that last hose clamp i loosened up pulled back so i'm just going to disconnect the hose from the pump there and the very first time it was extremely difficult to get that off i think it was a factory seal it was just really tight on there and it seems a little bit looser since i did this a year ago but that's why i saved this one for last because that way you have the whole pump disconnected and you can kind of get the best amount of torque to to twist and turn and get that little hose off uh, just seemed like to be the toughest connection for me. The installation of this is gonna be pretty simple. It's just gonna be the reverse of what we just did. So I'm gonna mount it down first, um, probably connect the wires and then just connect the hoses. So we are gonna silicone the large hose as it goes over this portion so that it doesn't leak. I'm going to crimp on the butt connectors too while the pump is loose just to make it easier so we're not messing around with that while upside down under the vehicle. Okay, back underneath the van. I'm going to try to uh, just clean this up a little bit, make sure everything's dry. This is where we're going to silicone inside of this hose, so I kind of want to just dry it a little bit, clean it up, and then we'll uh, get this pump back installed. Oops, I had two of those grommets in upside down, so make sure you put the grommets in with the fat side to the bottom. wiggle it down in and there's also these four uh, tiny washers that go on there too Okay, next I'm gonna load some silicone up in this larger hose, quite a bit of silicone, maybe just a little bit in the small one. I don't know if I put much in that at all, but the large one um, definitely needs silicone to seal tightly around here. So we will go ahead and throw that in and I'm gonna save the electrical for last and that is gonna be it. make sure I pull it all the way up there's a rib on the other side that it'll hit and we'll go ahead and tighten down this clamp you're gonna want to go ahead and let this silicone dry for at least 24 hours and then check for leaks when you're done nice and tight on the clamp all right, here's the other side. This is that little notch you can see that you wanna make sure you get the boot or the hose all the way up to that so it's nice and tight and snug. I'm gonna put just a little bit on the smaller hose and connect that. Okay, 
double check your connections, make sure they're tight, and let's move on to the electrical. We'll have to strip two new ends onto here, but then we'll connect our butt connectors, and that is gonna be it. Pretty simple, and we're just gonna let the silicone dry for about 24 hours, and then we'll uh, test everything and make sure it works, but pretty simple job, just a little dirty. So the very first time I had to replace this, it was because it was leaking, and I think that had to do with uh, improper winterization from myself. We had bought the coach in Florida and then winterized it and drove it all the way back up to Minnesota in January of, or actually December of 2018. And um, I definitely ran uh, fluid or antifreeze all the way through it. But if there's any type of water in there, you know, this is all plastic and it's gonna freeze, expand, and cause a leak. So the original one worked fine, but leaked. So then I replaced the second one and that one worked fine for a little bit, but then it started uh, intermittently turning off. So you'd turn it on, it would discharge for maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then it would shut off. It would trigger like a, a safety um, so that the motor didn't overheat, and then it would turn back on and continue pumping. So pumping both tanks took a frustratingly long time. So what I did was I contacted the company. They told me to tear it open because there's probably some type of jam inside there. And sure enough, inside this was kind of all really clogged up. So I had to take off the housing and get into this part to really kind of clean it out, which was a disgusting job. I should have just replaced it at that, at that point. But when I did, clean it out and assemble it all back together and reinstalled it. Uh, it worked fine at that point. It uh, did not shut off anymore, but what happened is it, it sprung a leak. So I don't know if the gaskets didn't reset or if I tore something or something just didn't get put back together. So then it leaked and just a little tiny bit and only when it was on. So it was just kind of frustrating as you go to dump it, it would just kind of dribble out just a little bit enough to annoy you and make a mess so obviously that's something that needed to be changed and then um, just recently it really started making some horrific noises <clears throat> even like metal on metal grinding so i don't know what happened to it but it kind of completely just stopped on us so that is why we're replacing this thing today for the second time one thing i didn't know about before is as this is mounted underneath your RV actually like that this little rubber piece pops off and it reveals a flathead screw so if you turn that that will manually turn the propellers inside and it'll loosen up or free any type of um, stuck propeller from from hair or whatever might be in there so recommended to do that even once in a while just to really break free any type of anything that's that's stuck inside there and you can see this metal propeller inside hopefully and this gets clogged quite a bit hair any type of large debris plastic chunks or anything like that will um, cause this to clog up um, there's a separate part for these four bolts so if you do try to repair it these are long bolts that go all the way down the housing here and the original ones are studs and they snap off they're brass so there is a replacement kit for these i'll put that part number down below also and then the repair kit i believe gives you this plastic housing um, there is a plastic impeller inside of here this chunk is just the motor itself so i think it gives you this plastic piece here perhaps this one also all right that's about it i hope you enjoyed the video hopefully it did help a little bit if you're in the same uh, bucket that I am where we have to replace this thing so please feel free to use our links down below and also give this video a thumbs up if it did help you if you liked it leave a comment ask a question if you want to and we'll check you later